So let's raise the big question. Is the Modi government now at war with the BBC? Will this entire battle hit India's global image in any way, particularly in a year when India is the G20 president? Is it wise to take on the BBC in a crucial year like this? Farooq Dhondi, author, columnist, uh, joins me from London. Kaval Sibal, former foreign secretary, is with me. And KC Singh, former secretary, ministry of external affairs, with you. Thank you all very much for joining us. When I come, before I come to you, I just want to play how the international media is reacting to this. Just take a look at some of the comments that we are getting at the moment. Washington Post. Indian government raids BBC offices in wake of documentary critical of Modi. Take a look at what uh, the New York Times is saying. Indian tax agents raid BBC offices after airing of documentary critical of Prime Minister Modi. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, again, Indian authorities search BBC offices after contentious Modi documentary. These are just some of the... Uh, uh, headlines I'm playing out. CNN, Indian authorities raid, raid BBC offices after broadcast of the Modi documentary. Uh, the Guardian in London, BBC offices in, in India raided by tax officials amidst Modi documentary fallout. And uh, Al Jazeera, Indian tax agents raid BBC offices in wake of Modi documentary. All of these cover symbol are linking the raids to the Modi documentary. To that extent, is this terrible optics for the government or do you believe the government can ride out this storm? Oh, I don't think it's much of a problem, though, of course, uh, Washington Post, New York Times, Guardian, Al Jazeera, uh, Wall Street Journal that you have uh, cited, they have always written very negatively about India. Now, if they were writing objectively about India, then whatever they write negatively, it can be then assessed on merits. Mm -hmm. But if they have this long-standing animosity uh, towards India, everything Indian, uh, then I think uh, we should take it in our, in our stride because all this is predictable. No, but, but with due regard, I Mr. Simbal, can we, can we completely identify India and the Modi government? They may be critical of the Modi government. That doesn't mean they are critical of India. Of course, of course it is like that. After all, it's the Prime Minister of India, is the ruling party of India. Mm -hmm. so how do you dissociate the ruling party and the Prime Minister from India? The target is both the Prime Minister BJP and India. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely right. So you can't, you can't say the Prime Minister doesn't represent India. Can we take that position? Or the BJP as the majority party in the country doesn't represent the majority of Indians, of course. No, but it, when it, they criticize it, the Modi government, are they criticizing India in your view? Of course, of course, because they are, they are attacking the governors of India. Mm -hmm. They are attacking the policies that the government of India is pursuing in India. They are, they are actually denigrating the Prime Minister and through that, India and how it is governed and its image, it's all interlinked. You can't separate the Prime Minister from India. It's definitely not. But should, now, we, people, should we therefore, in your view, ignore what the foreign media says? Should we, particularly this G20 you know, year when we have the presidency, uh, Rajiv, ignore what they are saying? Rajiv, two things. You know, when you say foreign media, what you really mean is Anglo-Saxon media. Mm -hmm. The rest of the world is not bothered one bit. You think uh, that ASEAN is bothered or Africa is bothered or Latin America is bothered or the Central Asian states are bothered, Russia is bothered, China is bothered, not at all. They all suffered at the hands of the BBC. So, so they'd be quite happy that some government has the courage uh, to actually deal with BJP uh, as they should be dealt with if they are transgressing the law. They will BBC, applaud the Freudian case. slip. BBC, yes. That they will... They, that they should deal with BBC the way it should be dealt with if they transgress the law. It's only the Anglo-Saxon world. And they've always been very critical. Even in the Anglo-Saxon world, much of East Europe will not do this. Mm -hmm. the, the Italians and the Spanish are not particularly concerned. Uh, it's, the, it's the British, the, the Germans now, I, I see that they've become very critical. The French media is critical. And of course, the, the United States media. So let's not Let's not be impressed too much by foreign condemnation. It is actually very limited okay. in terms of the West. And we have suffered at their hands for a long time. As for G20, and I'll finish with that. Yes. I would agree that uh, G20 is a time when they could exploit uh, this in order to make it a little awkward for mm -hmm. India. I mean the international press. On the other hand, I think the answer to that is that when you criticize the government of India and taking some action against BBC, has this media ever, mm -hmm. ever criticized the banning of all Russian media in their own countries? 
in their own countries. What happens to freedom of expression in that case? What happens to the public being properly informed of what is happening? Have an alternative view, accept dissent. They want to protect their public from anything that comes from, the, from Russia because they feel insecure right. that the truth may come out. Now, if they're so worried about that as mature democracies, then I think we, can, we have answers if there's any criticism on that score. And they're coming to the G20. It's not as if they're, they're not members of the G20. So they're not worried about how, what impression this will create on the global south, which is watching all this. Okay. So you're saying this has very limited impact globally. Uh, you want to respond, Farooq Dodi, that this is Kamal Sibal almost hinting that this is the Anglo-Saxon world, uh, the, the Western world in a way, looking at India through their lens and drawing this link between the Modi documentary and the raids on the BBC, India shouldn't be too worried. It will not affect India's global image. Even the British government uh, is silent. Well, the British government has nothing to do with criticizing the Modi government as such. It makes deals with them and so on. But in any democracy, in any liberal proper democracy, one has to separate the government from the country. Why? Because the government is not permanent in a democracy. It, it's by definition something that can change in short periods of time. There are other places which are not democracies, like China and Russia. And they, they sit on their media, they, they stop any negative image coming through to their populations, but in India, which professes to be a democracy, which has a democratic constitution, it is wrong for the government to step on uh, freedom of speech, to stop people writing about uh, or criticizing the government. And what was being said is quite wrong. The BBC always criticizes its own government. There's no problem about them saying that Liz Truss the ex-Prime uh, Minister was wrong in what she was doing. There were, I saw 10 programs which said that. There was no problem with the BBC saying that Boris Johnson had run Partygate and gone against his own laws and, and regulations. There's, there's always criticism of government policy on the BBC. That's what the BBC is for. Now, uh, obviously, the... The, the, the viewing public of the West might begin to think that the Modi government is censorious. Why? Because it is. It does ban this and stop that. And then, um, you know, as a, the, instead of defending themselves fact by fact uh, with, uh, against the documentaries that were shown on the BBC, I don't know, I, I will not make a judgment about the truth or the lies of them, but if the government, if the Modi government and India are against what the documentaries were saying, they should have taken the documentaries apart and said, this is wrong, this is factually wrong because uh, some, I read some pieces in the Indian press which said that the Supreme Court has uh, no, has, I, I, are you are you therefore saying are you therefore saying that this will in any way affect the global image of the Modi government? Do you really believe that the BBC has that kind of clout today? Yes, I do. I believe that it will affect the uh, the, the the image, but that does that will not affect the way that the Indian public votes. You know, if um, if the Indian public votes for the BJP, well, the BJP win the election and they become the government. That's that's the fact of democracy. That's the fact right. of the Constitution. But, but you know, in, in, a way so, that, in a way, therefore, Casey Singh, what we are seeing is, here's Kaval Sibal saying this is a bit of an Anglo-Saxon conspiracy. The rest of the world couldn't care. Farooq Dondi is saying the BBC still has that kind of clout. It is being seen as an assault on the freedom of the press. How do you see it? Do you really believe that the Modi government should be worried about how the international media opinion sees uh, raids being uh, or surveys taking place on the BBC, or should we just brazen it out and say, look, we will let our income tax authorities carry out their investigation. We are not worried whether it's the BBC, the New York Times, or the Wall Street Journal, or anyone for that matter. Rajiv, we can take the cynical stand and, uh, uh, and agree with Mr. Sibyl and say, who gives a damn? what the world is saying but at the same time we do quote the world we need global investment and we must make a distinction between what those governments will do 
they will approach cynically and uh, they were more excited yesterday about the planes that we ordered from Airbus and Boeing. That's right. Including the president of U.S. giving a very laudatory statement rather than uh, freedom of expression or uh, documentary not being shown in India. But that is how it has always been. Yes. But there is a democratic recession in the world and this is being debated. Uh, for instance, the latest index of economists, we can say it's another Anglo-Saxon uh, publication, puts both U.S. and India in the category of flawed democracies. Full democracies are only a few in Europe, not all of them, because even within the European Union, you have a fascist right-wing prime minister, though she's behaving herself in Italy. So democracy can also throw up governments which do not always protect democratic freedoms. Electoral democracy is one thing, but liberal democracy is another thing. Now, as far as Indian image is concerned, I totally agree with Mr. Dondi that it's an image in continuum. What makes India attractive to countries like U.S. or countries in the West is both her economy, both her geopolitical importance, but on a more lasting basis, uh, being a democracy as compared to China. But it's and never affecting the Eisenhower rise of China. But Mr. Casey is saying the fact that yeah. China is seen as a country where there are, there are these curbs on the, on the free press has never affected the rise of China. You just mentioned most of these leaders yesterday were speaking about the Airbus, the Boeing deal. They're not worried about a raid on BBC. Absolutely correct. And that is why all through the 80s and 90s, China was rising uh, because U.S. was focused elsewhere. All through the 80s, the Americans ignored the nuclear bomb and the existence between China, a cooperation between China and the Pakistanis until the Soviets had left Afghanistan. So there is cynicism right. and ge in geopolitics. By the same time, remember, Biden came into government uh, promising that he's going to focus on democracy. Unfortunately, he's been uh, derailed by COVID and derailed by the Ukraine war. He had a summit in December of 21. The next democracy summit is due in two months, in a month's time. It's in March 2023. Right. How do we look there when we go on a global forum and we are invited as a democracy and then this news uh, seeps through? So it doesn't affect our relations immediately, but does affect the thinking of the congressman, thinking of the elite in that country. We can be cynical and say we don't okay, give a that, damn. You know, they'll come to India because, you know, they me, need us. Let me but at the same time, what kind of an India do we want to make? Yeah, and that is don't... why opposition is so agitated in India. The liberal democracies may not be agitated because they have economic interests. Uh, they are interested in business in India. They are interested in geopolitical importance of India. But to continue India on an upward climb right. and retain the image we've had since 47, except for the period of emergency, I think it's important that we safeguard that image. We can be cynical. We can say it won't let, let probably me take that won't in Kaval the Sibyl, are you being, as KC Singh seems to suggest, being a, a little too cynical about it? Don't worry about the world. Geopolitics, geoeconomics, India is an economic superpower. Who is worried about what happens with a Modi documentary or tax rates on the BBC? Is that the line you are trying to take here today? We shouldn't be but, too worried about what the foreign media says about us. But do you think uh, the United States or Britain or anybody else are worried about what they are doing in, in Europe in time to suppress access altogether to Russian media. None of the uh, BBC or anybody else uh, will bring on the, into the discussion anybody who would defend the Russian position, or not only that. But does this take, who, but, no, but no, does, no, our, does our, sir, with due regard, does this affect our, anybody, sta our standing as a liberal democracy? So hold on, hold on. Not only that, anybody who would talk about dialogue and diplomacy, they are they are not allowed to express their dissent on in the in the in the media whether it is written or a visual. Does media. this affect our standing as a liberal democracy? No, if no. within weeks of a documentary you... critical of, of of the prime minister or the government of uh, of the Modi government during the Gujarat violence, the BBC is raided. I, I, the point is that do you think that these countries are worried about their own image when they do the kind of things they are doing in terms of actually? actually violating their own values blatantly, not only with regard to the media and so many other areas. Do you think they're worried? It's because we have this complex that somehow we have to be in the good books mm -hmm. and be paid by these guys. These guys have no complex. They will do what they want. They will violate all their principles as they are doing in so many fields, right. economic, security, cultural, religious, whatever have you. That's of course. I, I don't think we should have that mindset. So you're saying these countries are guilty of double standards. You're saying well, these countries absolutely. are guilty of double standards. Absolutely. They have absolutely. no reason to lecture us on democratic values. Farooq Dondi, you want to respond to that, what you're hearing? 
Or do you believe that India needs to, in a way, be conscious that one of our great advantages in the world is that we are perceived as a liberal democracy that allows a free press? We should be perceived as a liberal democracy that allows a free press. If all these commentators are saying that uh, there is no effect of the BBC documentary, that it's irrelevant, then why have they banned it? Why don't they take it apart in, as in any liberal democracy one ought to do in the freedom of expression and say this fact is wrong because, that fact is wrong because the BBC has made a mistake or that the BBC has viciously uh, libeled the Modi government. But, but what if the BBC yes, has committed no tax it. irregularities? Yes, what if the BBC it. has committed tax it. irregularities? Don't it and raid the BBC for income tax purposes. I don't understand what income the BBC has, you know, apart from, uh, apart from the fees that we pay the BBC as British citizens. Uh, what, what income tax business does, does the BBC have at all? And besides, don't confuse the BBC with the British government. They are separate organizations and the BBC maintains, religiously maintains its independence. And the fact that, that uh, Russia is not represented on the BBC is wrong. Mm -hmm. I have very often seen, very often, almost most, most days when you report the Ukrainian war, right. you have somebody in Moscow saying what the Moscow public are thinking, what the Russians allow their public to see and don't allow them to see. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Uh, uh, they banned the, they banned RT. The, Come on, they banned Sputnik. They banned all exactly. Russian media. The fact that Russia has not banned the they're not putting the, media. No, they're not putting the Russian <laughs> the point point let, Russia. But they're reporting from Russia. Okay, let yes. me let me just stop, gentlemen, uh, the two of you, for a final word from you, KC Singh, because there will be those who will say, look, this is also an opportunity. You've already seen the Hindu Sena, you know, uh, surround the BBC office today. That the BBC is anti-India. Do you think this pitch will work that the BBC is anti-India, it has in the past uh, never shown the map of Kashmir the way India wants to, has at times gone against the stated official position of the government of India, will it work or not? A quick answer. Rajdeep, didn't we see this documentary play out under Mrs. Gandhi? All this has been tried then, right up to the emergency. There was a similar kind of intolerance then and what was the net result? She was shown the door once. So Indian public is very shrewd. They know what is the difference between India and the Indian government. They give a lot of leeway to the Indian government. But at the same time, they realize where the lines are crossed. They realize where personal interests of people, uh, where touchiness on certain things uh, start impacting on India's image. Uh, now, even the common man, if you ask him if he's on the street, he may not be aware of it. But sooner or later, if you keep doing it, they realize that government is being strong arm and shouldn't be doing this. Because basically we are a decent country. Basically we are a decent lot of people who don't like to use those methods against us or against the others. Okay. And that is the selling point of India. And if we start diluting it and become a more right-wing, very assertive, intolerant government, uh, then that image will take a while uh, to damage India's overall image. Uh -huh. But it's inevitable. For instance, I told you about the economist. Now, in amongst the flawed democracies, the U.S. has also been put. It's not that they are just pillorying India. Even the U.S. post-Trump is seen as a flawed democracy. So let therefore, it is not that they don't point a finger at themselves. Okay. Let, so let me leave it there. Let me so leave it there. Because we've yeah. had three different divergent views. And in a sense, that's why we are a democracy. That we can on primetime television still debate it without me fearing that someone is about to come and raid me in the office at the moment and ask me about my income. I can assure you I'm more than prepared for that. But the fact is we still have, I hope, a free press and the freedom means not mirroring what the government wants to hear but asking the hard question. That's what we will continue to do on the news today. I appreciate my guests joining me.